In this video, we're going to talk about how to find all of the solutions, the real and the imaginary solutions of a polynomial function. So let's start with this example. We have x to the fourth minus 16 is equal to zero. What are the solutions to this function or to this equation? Well, we could use this formula. We have a difference of perfect squares. a squared minus b squared can be factored into a minus b times a plus b. So in this example, a squared is x to the fourth. To find a, we need to take the square root of that. The square root of x to the fourth is x squared. You basically divide this number by two. So our a value is x squared. To find our b value, we need to take the square root of 16. The square root of 16 is four. So we get x squared plus four x squared minus 4. Now it turns out that we could factor x squared minus 4. We could use the same process again. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 4 is 2. And so we're going to have x plus 2 and x minus 2. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set each factor equal to 0. If we set x minus 2 equal to 0, we get our first answer, x is equal to positive 2. If we set the other factor, x plus 2 is equal to 0, and if we subtract both sides by 2, we get another real solution, x is equal to negative 2. Now let's set this factor equal to 0. What we're going to have to do is subtract both sides by 4. Doing so, we get this equation, x squared is equal to negative 4. And then if we take the square root of both sides, we get that x is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 4. Now we can rewrite the square root of negative 4 as the square root of 4 times the square root of 1. The square root of 4 is 2. Now the square root of negative 1 is the imaginary number i. So we get x is equal to 2i, that is positive 2i, and x is equal to negative 2i. So we get a total of four solutions, which makes sense because the, lead in, the degree of the leading term is 4. So if the exponent is 4, you can get a maximum of four solutions. This includes real solutions and imaginary solutions. In this example, we have two real solutions and two imaginary solutions for a total of four. Now let's work on this polynomial function. We have x cubed minus 3x squared plus 9x minus 27 is equal to zero. So what are the solutions to this equation? What we can do is we can factor by grouping. Notice that the ratio of the coefficients of the first two terms is the same as the last two. If we divide negative three by one, we're gonna get negative three. If we divide negative 27 by 9, we will also get negative 3. When you see that, you can factor by grouping. So let's take out the GCF in the first two terms. The greatest common factor is x squared. If we divide x cubed by x squared, we're going to get x. And if we divide negative 3x squared by x squared, we're going to get negative 3. Now let's do the same thing for the last two terms. The GCF is 9. 9x divided by 9 is x, negative 27 divided by 9 is negative 3. So note that we have these two common factors. If they're the same, you know you're on the right track. So we're going to factor out x minus 3. If we take away x minus 3 from the first term, we're left with x squared. And if we take away x minus 3 from the second term, we're left with uh, plus 9. So this is how we can factor the original equation. Now let's set each factor equal to zero. For the first one, we just need to add three to both sides and we get the solution x is equal to three. For the second one, we need to subtract both sides by nine. We're gonna get x is equal to, or rather x squared is equal to negative nine. Taking the square root of both sides, we get that x is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 9. 
which we can break it up into the square root of 9 times the square root of negative 1. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of negative 1 is i. So we have a total of three solutions because our original problem was a degree 3 polynomial. So we have one real solution and we have two we have two imaginary solutions for a total of three solutions. Try this one. x cubed plus 8 is equal to 0. So what are all the solutions in this example problem? Well, once again, we have a degree 3 a polynomial, and so we expect to have a total of three solutions. It could be three real solutions, or we might get one real solution and two imaginary solutions. But let's find out. So what we have is a sum of perfect cubes. So we could use this formula. a to the third plus b to the third can be factored into a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. So x cubed is a cubed. b to the third is 8. a is going to be the cube root of x cubed, which is x. b is going to be the cube root of 8, which is 2. a squared is going to be x squared, and then a times b, that's 2 times x with a negative sign, and then b squared or 2 squared, which is 4. And so we get this. Now, let's set each factor equal to 0. Subtracting both sides by 2, we get our first answer, x is equal to negative 2. For the second one, we need to use the quadratic formula x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. a is the number in front of x squared, b is the number in front of x, c is the constant term. So this is going to be negative, negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared minus 4ac over 2a, and a is 1. So this is going to be positive 2 plus or minus negative 2 squared is 4 and then 4 and 4 is 16 with a negative sign in front. Now 4 minus 16 is negative 12. And we could simplify the square root of negative 12. We can break that into the square root of 4 times the square root of 3 times the square root of negative 1. The square root of 4 is 2 and the square root of negative 1 is i. So we get this. And then we could divide each of these numbers by the denominator of 2. So we get that x is going to be 1 plus or minus 1 square root 3i, or simply square root 3i. So we have a total of three solutions. We have one real solution, and here we have two imaginary solutions. The first imaginary solution is 1 plus root 3i. The second is 1 minus the square root of 3 times i. Now let's work on one more example. So let's say we have the polynomial function x cubed plus 6x minus 7 is equal to 0. How can we solve this one? Well, it's going to be hard to factor this expression, but we could use synthetic division. Before we do that, we need to make a list of all the possible zeros that might work for this function. To do that, take all the factors of the constant term 7. So that will be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 7. And then write down the factors of the leading coefficient in front of the highest term. So the factors of 1 is just plus or minus 1. So when we divide this, we get just 1 and 7. Let's try positive 1 to see if that works. So we're going to use synthetic division, and we're going to write the coefficients of this equation. So we have 1x cubed, so we're going to write 1. Now we don't have an x squared, so you could think of it as plus 0x squared, and then it's plus 6x minus 7. 
and then we're trying x equals 1. So we're going to put this number there. Let's bring down the 1. We need to multiply these two numbers. 1 times 1 is 1. And then we're going to add these two numbers. 0 plus 1 is 1. And then multiply. 1 times 1 is 1. And then add. 6 plus 1 is 7. 1 times 7 is 7. And then negative 7 plus 7 is 0. If you get a 0, that means it works. It means that 1 is a solution. If you were to plug in 1 into this equation, you would get 0. 1 to the third plus 6 times 1 minus 7, that's equal to 0. Now, let's turn this into a factor. This is the constant term 7. This is the number in front of x. And this is the number in front of x squared. So thus, we can rewrite the equation in its factor form like this. It's x minus 1 which comes from this solution, times x squared plus x plus 7. So we already have the solution for this factor. We need the solution for this one. So we need to use the quadratic equation. So we can see that a is 1, b is 1, and c is 7. So it's going to be negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 7 over 2, or 2 times 1. So this is going to be 1 minus 28, which is negative 27. Now, negative 27, we can write that as the square root of 9 times the square root of 3 times the square root of negative 1. The square root of 9 is 3, and we can replace the square root of negative 1 with i. And so this is the solution. So let's write out each individual solution. So we have one real solution, that is x is equal to 1, and then we have two imaginary solutions. The first one is going to be negative 1 plus 3 root 3 times i divided by 2. The second one is going to be negative 1 minus 3 root 3 times i over 2. So those are the three solutions that we have for this polynomial equation.